The Arizal brings in the Kabbalah that had the Jews not have been rescued out of Egypt the moment they were, meaning had it have been one moment later, we would have never gotten out. Why? Because we would have sunk to the 50th level of impurity. There are 50 levels of impurity and 50 levels of, of, of understanding and, and holiness. So there are like 50 on this side and 50 on that side. Ultimately, it seems pretty clear that our goal is to become the most perfect and highest achieved uh, creation of Hashem, body and soul. We're meant to climb the highest levels of the 50 levels of holiness and understanding. If we go in the opposite direction and choose to just strengthen our animal within and do the evil things that Hashem says not to do with the Yetzirah and all of the evil pulls in our addiction, so we can fall to the lowest level, it's 50. The interesting point is, if you reach level 50, it's called game over, there's no, you're beyond hope, and there's no more fixing for you, and you cannot climb back up from 50. 50 is the point of no return. In Egypt, 210 some odd years, so we were there, and we reached the level 49 of impurity. And had we have sunk to one more level lower, it would have been the point of no return. Therefore, Hashem had mercy on us and took us out even though we were not ready, even though we did not deserve it. And in fact, if we look at the story, we see that four-fifths of the Jews did not leave. So one might tell you, well, why not? Because they were Rishayim, you know, wicked people. It's only the righteous people that left. And that's absolutely false. Why? We find that when the Jews were at the splitting of the sea, the angels accused all those Jews at the splitting of the sea and said, God, why are you going to make a miracle for them and split the sea? They worship idols. They worshipped idols. How can you save them? They deserve to die just like the Egyptians. And God's answer was not, no, that's not them. Those, those are the four-fifths that died in Egypt. This is the one-fifth that didn't worship idols. That was not the answer. The answer was, you're right. They also did, did worship idols. But the, I want to save them because they're my children. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, having, God was being very merciful. So we see that in Egypt, we were guilty of worshiping idols. <clears throat> And we reached a very low level. And Hashem had Rahmanas on us to take us out. I'll share with you another Midrash. This is because it's a very, just like extreme language there. The, the Midrash says over there like this. Moshe comes and tells the Jews, at the end of the month, we're leaving. Pack up, let's get ready, we're going. At the end of the month, God's taking us out of here, and we're going out. We're being redeemed. They said to Moshe, Moshe, who, who, are, you, who are you trying to fool? You expect us to believe that God's going to come at the end of the month and redeem us? The entire Egypt is full of our idol worship. We, we, we are better than them at idol worship. You, you expect us to believe that God's going to take us out? That's a midrash. Now that midrash shows us in an unbelievable way that the Jews were so steeped in idol worship that they're claiming that the Egyptians are learning from them how to, pro how to serve idols. Unbelievable statement. Yet, Moshe is telling them that Sofa Chodesh, we're going out. Hashem's taking us out. So what's the answer? Moshe says to them, it's, Hashem understands, that, yeah, it's true that we are, you are involved in idol worship, but because God wants to take us out, he's ignoring that. He's going to turn the other way and not look at it and take us out anyway. And now, 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 now with that in mind, so let's understand. So the Jews that left Egypt were, were about to reach the 50th level and would have been stuck there forever. And Hashem preempted and took them out just before that moment to get them out to save them. Otherwise, there would be no more Jewish people. Okay? What about the four-fifths that died? So we have to ask ourselves, and why did four-fifths get stuck there and not leave? If the, if the fifth that left was wicked, just like the four-fifths that died, so what, what, what was the selection there? Why, on, on what basis were, were this one-fifth able to leave, and the other four-fifths had to, had to die there? So unfortunate, sad, and simple answer is because those four-fifths simply did not want to leave. They were happier to stay in Egypt because go right now and if you think how dare they, what wicked people, what terrible people, how could they not want to leave Egypt? Well, let me ask you a question. How many of us are ready to leave our own Egypt today, right now? Go to America, go to England, go anywhere you go. How many people are ready to leave their own life and their addictions? There's a cute story brought by uh, one of these nice Jewish stories where... Uh, this nice Jewish man comes home and tells his wife, guess what? They had in the, in the shul the, the news. The news is Mashiach is coming. He's here. And we're all going back to Israel. And she says, what do you mean going back to Israel? I'm, I'm happy right where I am. We're here. What, why, why should we go to Israel? What do you mean? You, you, what do you mean? What about the Russian, the Russian czar? The Russian government? 
the, the Cossacks. You're happy? He's like, so let them go to Israel and we'll be happy here. And so on and so on. And in a more contemporary terminology, Mashiach's here, but I'm about to close a million dollar deal. Can he come back next month? Mashiach's here, but, uh, but my son is the quarterback in our football league and I'm the coach. Can he come back when football season is over? Um, Mashiach is here, but will there be ice hockey in, uh, in Israel? Who's really ready to leave? Who really wants to leave? I would like to say, where are those four fists? Today, right now, majority of this world, Jew and non-Jew, because everyone has a chance to believe in Hashem and understand that Hashem wants to save us in some way, but certainly us, Am Yisrael, right now, today, I believe we're those four fists. Majority of the Jews alive today are those four fists. Why is Mashiach not here? Why haven't we not married a Mashiach to come and take us out of this hell? Four-letter word, hell. Why not? The hell we created, by the way. I'm not blaming anybody. You create your own hell. You, your choices that you make create whatever life you hate, whatever you, you look in the mirror and hate, whatever world you look around you and hate, most of it is because of you. You created it yourself. And it's our job to fix it. But why are we not being saved by Mashiach? Why is, what's stopping Mashiach so long? We simply don't really want him. We simply don't really want to do the things, simple things, to bring him. So what's stopping Mashiach? Who's stopping Mashiach? We are. If we, if, when we want Mashiach, then he'll be here. When we want Hashem more than we want his toys, so Hashem will be here instead of his toys, and we'll have him, and we'll have Mashiach, and we'll have everything. But until then, let's deal with this situation that we're dealing with right now. We're back in Egypt, and the four-fifths have died. Why? Because they didn't want to leave. Very sad story. So what happens to them? Very good question. What does it mean that four-fifths of the Jews died in Egypt? So what it simply means is this. They didn't disappear. The souls of Israel, the holy and the shemot of the Jewish people, can never disappear. It just means they were not ready, and they did not merit to come out with Klal Yisrael at Har Sinai. But their souls have to come back into this world in some other way, some later time, to do their fixing and to, to, to earn their portion in God's world. They didn't disappear, but they didn't get out then. They'll have to come later. That's, the, that's what happened to them. And the, the one-fifth that did leave, so they were at this 50th level, and if they right at the, right at the border, they were like knocking on the door. Maybe they had one foot in already. And Hashem grabbed them and saved them at the, at the very last moment. So what's happening right now? Where are we right now, the Jewish people? 2024, all around the world. Some of them are screaming the, 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 the craziest things you can imagine. It's, it's sad, heartbreaking, and weakening. When you look at the comments on a lot of these, these articles or these videos that are pro-Israel and pro, pro-Judaism, to see so many Jews screaming at God, screaming at God, screaming at, at, at their fellow Jew. There, there's, the world is so confused, so confused that you know what happens when the majority, the majority world is insane and the minority is sane. You know what happens? Mm-hmm. Better get some straitjackets because they're gonna, they're gonna. Well, we don't have to get. They're gonna put. They're gonna get the straitjackets and put them on us. The minority of sane people get swallowed up by the majority of insane people. This is the fact of life. The 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 idea of a crowd when there's there's mass hysteria in a crowd. Those few people that are standing there and that, that are against that crowd get consumed. Many times they go to the hospital, sometimes they die because of this insanity that, that just consumes everything. A fire, like a raging fire that consumes everything in its path. So what happens when the majority of the world is insane? You better start praying for the, that, that small amount of sane people because they're going to be swallowed up alive by, by, the, by the popular opinion and by the governments that are in control and by the societies that are defining everything, and by the people with the money and the companies. That's it. We're going to be in, 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 in this uh, self-made jail because we are the minority stand up for truth. So it's a very sad, today's very sad moment that we're in, a very difficult, very scary moment. But guess what? Hashem can do anything. Hashem took Joseph out of jail in Egypt, which was a big miracle, and he will take us out of this jail. He'll take us out of, us out of this jail. So what happens now? Where are we right now? The... The, the, the Jewish people today, where are we? Are we on the 49th level? What level are we on? So according to many rabbis today, we are today in the 50th level. Right now we're in the 50th level. Think about it. Shar Hamishi, that's where we are right now. This is hell. This is the, you, you can't get a, a lower, more disgusting, more dark, more confused, 
more evil world than the world we're in right now. It never existed in the history of, of mankind. Right now, we're in the 50th level. But we said something before that contradicts. We said, you can't come back from the 50th level. How can we be in the 50th level right now? So the explanation is this. Before God chose us and took us out of Egypt, before he gave us the Torah, yes, had we reached 50, it would have been too late. But today, with Torah, and with the fact that Hashem chose us, and in the Torah itself, it says he's never going to replace us. So even in 50, we will still come out of 50. Today, we can rise from the 50th level, and we will. But because we're in the 50th level, it's a time where we have to use anything and everything we have to fight back. And that is a reason why today you see a lot of people teaching Kabbalah, because Kabbalah corresponds to the 50th level of Tuma. It's the crown jewel of God's crown of Torah. And it is the 50th level of holiness, the 50th level of, 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 of understanding, the 50th level of the power of good. And so we fight fire with fire. We are fighting the darkness today with the greatest light that was created for this very moment, for us. We are not midgets standing on giants. We're midgets, that's true. But we are not just the end result of, of a generation of people, generations of people that lived before us and because they were great, so Hashem's going to send the Sheikh and we're nothing and we're nobody. No, Hashem put us here at the end because it's specifically us at the end on this low level of the heel that's, that's, that's in this 50th level of Tuma that have to figure out how to get out. And it's because of what God gives us to get out is how we're going to get out. Hashem is with us. We have to be with Hashem. We have to be with ourselves. We have to understand everything's riding on us. If we die today, then Yaakov is dead. If we die today, then every single generation of Jewish people that ever came into this world are dead. They are only alive because we're alive. Like it says in the Gemara. How come Yaakov is not, died, not dead? He, he's, he's dead and buried. Of course he's dead. No, but he's, his soul is alive. His purpose is alive. Why? Because we're alive. If his children are alive, then he's alive. And if we don't make it out of here, if we die, if we give up on ourselves and on Judaism, then we're giving up on... The, the millions and millions of, of Jews that, that died before us. 